In this video, I'd like to show you how to calculate the present value of a growing annuity. So in the level 3 syllabus, uh, in asset allocation or in private wealth management, you may be given a series of cash flows and the cash flows grows at a certain rate like the inflation rate every year okay for a certain number of years and then you are required to find the present value of that growing annuity so then uh, it becomes a problem when you use your financial calculator that only takes the input of one discount rate so it doesn't take uh, two uh, growth rates you can't put in the growth rate and the discount rate at the same time so in this video, I'd like to show you a quick hack around it and also using uh, the formula to calculate the present value. So of course, uh, in the case of a growing annuity, we have the PMT, which is the annuity amount, okay, in real terms. And then uh, we will assume that the annuity grows at a certain growth rate G every year, okay, and then there is a discount rate R here. So we'll have to calculate the present value for all this annuity that grows at a constant rate G for let's say N number of years. Now, to modify uh, the inputs so that you can uh, use your financial calculator, you will have to convert the one plus G over one plus R into only one rate. So what I mean by that is that I want to convert it in such a way that we we'll only have to take the PMT, the annuity amount, the constant annuity, divide by one plus the adjusted discount rate. So this adjusted discount rate will take into account of the growth rate as well as the discount rate. So in this case, if I were to compare the two, okay, so what I will do is uh, we will take one plus G, okay, one plus G over one plus R. So that will be equals to one over one plus this adjusted rate. Okay, so if I were to work out this adjusted rate, so that would be 1 plus R over 1 plus the growth rate minus 1. So once we work out this adjusted discount rate, we will set this adjusted discount rate as the IY in the Texas BA2 financial calculator. So this is one way around it. So instead of having to find a way to input the growth rate or the discount rate, or trying to calculate the cash flow each year and then inputting it into the cash flow worksheet, which is a lot of hassle, especially when N is large. All right, so these are some quick hacks that we will look at shortly. Now, for those of you who are, are familiar with the formula of uh, the, the uh, geometric progression, you can also try to derive the formula, okay, for this uh, the sum of this geometric progression. So before I go to the example, let me just, uh, for those who are inclined with mathematics, so we can actually factorize the annuity amount times 1 plus the growth rate over 1 plus the discount rate. Okay, and then uh, we will have uh, 1 plus 1 plus G over 1 plus R. Okay, for the, this is a 1, okay, 1 here is actually for the first term, the second term becomes 1 plus G over 1 plus R to power of 1. And then we continue to do this until the last term, of course, uh, which is uh, 1 plus G over 1 plus R to the power of N minus 1. Now, of course, all in all, they are total of N terms here. So if you treat this as a sum of a geometric progression, where this is A plus uh, AR plus all the way up to AR uh, to power of N, uh, what we will get here is actually equals to so this will be PMT times 1 plus G over 1 plus R, okay? And for this entire thing here, okay, we will have 1 minus the R, the ratio here, which is actually 1 plus G over 1 plus R, and then to the power of N terms. So there's N there over 1 minus the ratio, which is 1 plus G over 1 plus R. Now just take note that R here in the formula is a discount rate, whereas R here is actually the ratio Okay, of one term over the previous term, so not to confuse that. So after we are done with this, we can actually simplify the formula. So in this case, for the bracket, uh, for the numerator, there's nothing to change. So that's just one minus uh, one plus the growth rate over one plus the discount rate to the power of n. And then for the denominator, we have uh, one plus r minus one plus g. So that's actually uh, r minus g over one plus r there. 
All right, and then we have PMT times 1 plus G over 1 plus R. So we can actually simplify this. Okay, so your final formula will look like this. Okay, you will have PMT times 1 plus G over R minus G, and then multiply by 1 minus 1 plus the growth rate over 1 plus the discount rate to power of N. So what we can look at, or what we can conclude from this formula here is that for the numerator here, is actually the cash flow in the next period, okay, which is the first year's total cash flow. Okay, so this is your numerator. And then the denominator is R minus G, okay? And of course, in the bracket here, you just need to take one minus uh, the ratio of one plus the growth rate over one plus the discount rate to power of N, okay, which is this last term here. All right, that's an easy way to remember. Okay, and of course, uh, when n becomes large, okay, if n approaches infinity, then the formula will just be equals to the Gordon growth, somewhat similar to the Gordon growth model, where you only have the annuity times one plus growth rate over r minus g. Okay, however, this formula applies to a finite annuity. Now, let's apply all this to an example. So in example one, your wealth manager has recommended an investment portfolio that would meet your living expenses for the next five years, and the first payment will be one year from today, from your portfolio. So your current living expenses is $60,000 per year, and is expected to increase at the inflation rate of 3% per annum. So the required rate of return on the portfolio is 7%. Calculate the capital to be invested in the portfolio today. So looking at the timeline, okay, for from year one, we have uh, 60,000, which is the current living expenses for, at time zero, times 1.03, the inflation rate. So we have, this is what we need to meet, what the portfolio has to generate to pay for the living expenses in year one, year two, year three, four, and five. And if we discount all these cash flows at a rate of 7%, then the PV of these cash flows will be equals to this amount. Now, of course, uh, if you were to calculate this one by one, you will be able to get the answer. Okay, but imagine if this is 10 years or 15 years, it will be quite a hassle to compute. Okay, now for sake of simplicity, let's say if you calculate this, okay, you will get uh, 267986 dollars, okay? Uh, this is the total PV for the five years. Okay, so this is the full amount. So you can verify against this yourself. Okay, now what we're going to do now is, uh, let's say if I were to use the adjusted rate, okay, if I were to calculate the adjusted rate here, I would take 1 plus R, okay, over 1 plus G minus 1. So the R here is uh, 7%, which is 1.0.07 0 .07, and divide by 1 plus 3% minus 1. So that gives us about 3.883495%. So with this uh, discount rate, we can now substitute this or input this into your financial calculator. Right, so in the financial calculator, okay, we will input, uh, let's say, the adjusted rate, which is 3.883495. So this is the IY. Okay, and here is equals to 5 because there are 5 payments. Okay, there are 5 of them. Okay, and uh, the PMT here, you can put it as 60. Okay, you can put it as 60 here. And then uh, your future value is zero at year five. There's nothing extra there. Okay, so we have keyed everything. So now you can just compute uh, PV. Okay, and you will get $267,986. All right, so that gives you the total PV of this growing annuity. Okay, you just have to make sure that you key in the PMT correctly and the adjusted rate is input with the percentage, right? Now, if you want to use the formula that uh, we derived earlier, then the PV will be the PMT, okay, the PMT in the first year over R minus G and then multiply by 1 minus 1 over uh, 1 minus 1 plus the growth rate over 1 plus the discount rate to power of n. So that so the PMT times 1 plus G here is equals to the first year's cash flow. So that's uh, 60. That's 60 times 1.03 over uh, R, which is uh, 7%. 7% minus 3%. And then multiply by 1 minus 
uh, 1.03 for the growth rate and then over 1.07 for the discount rate to the power of 5. Okay, so if you were to work this out using a calculator, so from the calculator, so if I work from inside the bracket, I have a 1.03 divided by 1.07, okay, and that's to power of 5. Okay, so that gives us the, the second term here, so would that be negative plus 1, all right, and then uh, you multiply to the numerator 60 times 1.03. Okay, and then we'll divide by bracket 0 0.07 minus 0 0.03, close bracket. So we'll also get $267,986, okay, as the total present value. Now, one thing to watch out here is that, okay, if uh, you are given the current living expenses, then it'll be simple to input that as your PMT. But let's say in another scenario, if you are being told that, your living expenses for next year, okay, next year is estimated to be $60,000 per year, not this year, but next year. And there will also be an inflation rate of 3% uh, in the year after the year one, that means from year two onwards, okay. And th in this case, this is how the cash flow will look like, 60000 in year one, and then in year two, it will be growing at 3% sub and onwards. So in this case, when you're calculating the PV, right, you will be taking uh, in the first term here that you will only have 60,000 okay and then uh, from year two it'll be 60,000 times uh, 1.03 and so on and so forth now if you were to calculate the total here okay just let me just so the total here would just be 260,180 dollars okay you can calculate that to verify the numbers now how are we going to work around in this case All right the adjusted rate that we have previously is still applicable so we can still use uh, the 3.883495% based on the uh, discount rate and the growth rate. Okay, so there's no change here, so we'll stick to that. The only thing is how do you work around the, uh, the initial cash flow in year one. So recall previously that uh, for the first term, we are assuming that this is PMT times 1 plus the growth rate. Okay, so what we can do here, a quick workaround is you can assume that the PMT times 1 plus the growth rate is equals to this 60,000 in year 1. So the growth rate is 3%. So if you work this around, the PMT here will be 60 over 1.03, okay, which is around 58.252427. Uh, okay, we can key this into your calculator to work out the numbers. So let's try that. If I input this PMT now, so that's 58.25427, uh, so that's the PMT now. And let's check that the inputs are the same, that's 5 years, okay, 5 payments. Uh, this is the adjusted discount rate, this is the future value, so we'll just compute the PV again. So you'll get $260,180. Okay, it's still the same amount here, nothing has changed. Okay, now, there's also another quick trick that you can do if you do not want to do this, all right, you can still keep using 60 as the PMT, okay, 60 here, and then you can compute the present value, okay, but uh, all you need to do here, an additional step, step is to divide by 1 plus the growth rate, okay, so that will also give you the same answer, okay, so I'll just stick to one way, whichever you find that you're comfortable with, all right, if you want to use the formula, uh, so again, when you use the formula, we have a PMT times 1 plus the growth rate over R minus G. And then that is uh, multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus the growth rate over 1 plus the discount rate, the power of N. So this numerator here is actually the first year's cash flow, which is 60. So we'll just take 60 over 0 0.07 minus 0 0.03. All right, and then that is uh, 1 minus uh, 1.03 over 1.07 to the power of 5, okay? So we'll use the calculator again. So this will be, uh, again, working from inside the bracket. So that's 1.03 divided by 1.07 to the power of 5, okay, with a negative sign plus 1, and then we multiply by 60, and we divide by uh, the denominator here is 0 0.04, so you get $260,180, okay, so that is, uh, I mean, that, that is how you get the answer. Of course, uh, the, uh, I mean, of course, you could have just taken the answer from what we had previously, and then you divide by uh, 1.03.
So coming back to this point here where we calculated the PV earlier, you could have just taken 267.986, uh, okay, and then divide by uh, 1.03, okay, you could have gotten the answer as well. So of course, uh, here we're assuming that the first payment actually starts on one period from today, but if the first payment starts immediately now, then of course you can change the payment mode to BGN, which is for annuity due. Okay, currently we are using the ordinary annuity mode.